Now we're going to design a letterhead. I'll choose File New Document, and with a letterhead I want to leave a little bit of extra room at the top for the logo. So I'll unlock the margins, and at the top type one and a half. For the bottom I'll give it a thinner margin at half an inch, and on the left and right I'll go with a quarter. These are just my recommendations, not necessarily industry standard, but look at some of your favorite or interesting letterhead, and then you can use that as a model for your own. I'll hit Save Preset and name this letterhead, and I'll click OK and OK again. And we're going to start by placing guides where my logo should go. As I move into the hash marks on the ruler, I'll click and drag down, and I want this to be at 0.25 inches. You'll notice that when I let go inside the black line of the page edge, it crops to the edge of the page. If I drag outside the black line of the page edge, my guide goes all the way to the ruler. I prefer my guides here so that when I zoom in or zoom out, I can better estimate where my guides are. Now this guide is selected because it's blue. I'm going to hit Command minus or Control minus to zoom out, and I'll place another guide along this edge at 0.25, letting go outside the black line. Here you could see this guide is cyan, meaning it's not selected, and the one I just created is blue, meaning it is selected. In fact, if I wanted a specific value, I can double click an X and type a number, and it will move to that spot. I'll set that back to 0.25, and I'll place one last guideline on the right. Now I'm ready to import my logo. So I'll choose File, Place. I'll grab from the Chapter 2 folder and the Images folder the OLI logo and double click to pull it in. When my cursor is black, you'll notice here in the upper left corner it's a tiny black arrow. When I move to where the guides meet, it turns white. Black, white. When you see white, that means the InDesign will snap to the guides that I've created, or to margin guides, or to column guides. So one quick click placed my logo. Now I'll switch to the Line tool, and I'm going to start from the right edge, and as I click and drag, I'll hold down Shift to keep the line perfectly straight. I could see through the Smart Guides that the length is 8 inches and I'll use my down arrow key on my keyboard to nudge this just below my logo. I'll go to my selection tool, click away, and I often like to use preview mode to visually control where everything is. I'll go back to normal mode, and I think I like that. Now I'll wheel down towards the bottom, and I'll draw a text box to place a caption at the bottom. So with the Type tool, I'm clicking and dragging to make a text box, and I'll type the company website. I'll hit Command Plus or Control Plus to zoom in. I love that InDesign is smart enough to know to zoom to where my cursor's sitting. And I'll type a little bit more information. And when I'm finished, I'll do a Select All, Command A or Control A, or Edit, Select All. My corporate font is Century Gothic, so I'm going to change it to Century Gothic. You may not have this font installed on your system, so if you don't have it, you could use Myriad Pro. I'll choose Optical for better letter spacing, so Optical Kerning gives me better, more even proportional spacing between every letter. And I could see the red squiggles under the typos because I have Edit Spelling, Dynamic Spelling on. OnlineInstruct.com is something I type frequently, so I'll right-click and add it to my dictionary. The green squiggle indicates I started this with a lowercase character, but that's okay. That's how the company is branded, all lowercase. With Online, I'll click once, and it's suggesting that I hyphenate this. So I'll go ahead and do that. 
And then finally, e-classes. I'll right-click and add that to my dictionary. I'll center the text, and if your resolution isn't high enough, you may need to go to the Paragraph section of your Control Panel to center. I'll select all again, Command A or Control A, and I'm going to make this information at the bottom lighter by adjusting the tint. I'll go to 50% and press Return or Enter to accept it. Now I'll fit the page in Window, and I want to make my type size a little bit smaller. We'll go for 9 points. And I'll switch back to my selection tool to set the height of this box to a quarter of an inch. I use a quarter for a lot of stuff. Then I'll align the text to the bottom of the box. If your resolution is high enough, you'll have a line top, a line center, or a line bottom, which place the text at the bottom of this text frame. If your resolution isn't high enough, I could choose Object, Text Frame Options, and select Vertical Justification, Align Bottom. I'll finish this off with a line along the bottom margin, so I'll just start above and then position it mathematically. As I hold down Shift to drag it, I really want this line to be 7 inches. It's going to be a little bit smaller. And once I get the line to 7 inches, I'll also do a tint of 50%. Finally, I'll go to my Selection tool and drag this line to the bottom margin. When I cross over the dead center of my page, the Smart Guides light up to indicate that I did center the line. And I'll just use my down arrow key a few times to nudge that below the bottom margin. I'll click away and hit the letter W for Preview, and my letterhead is coming together. I'll select this top line and nudge it down once or twice, and hit W to go back to normal mode. Now I'd like to save this as a template, so I'm going to use my Type tool to draw a text box. And with that text box, I'll type the word Date as a placeholder. I hit Command A or Control A to select all, and I'll choose my corporate font, leave the size at 12, and select Optical Kerning. And to make the date right aligned, I'll select this line and click Right Align, go to the end, press Return or Enter, and Left Align, and type Dear, and leave a space and a comma. So to finish this off, I'll choose File, Save As, and I'll call this OLI Letterhead, and I'll make it a template. When I choose InDesign CS6 Template, it will always open a copy so I never harm the original. I'll click Save. I already had one here, so I'll replace it. I'll close this up, and now if I choose File Open, and open from my Chapter 2 folder the OLI letterhead. It opened and untitled. I can double click on the date, press Return or Enter, and the double click did select the return afterwards. So I'm going to right align this again, put the information to who this is going to, and now I've got a letterhead that I can reprint over and over again or delete the text box, send this off to the print shop, and get my own letterhead professionally printed.